Judy LeRoy and I do sports paintings. I've just had a gallery showing at the artist at the art garage in Green Bay, Wisconsin, before the Super Bowl. The Packers won the Super Bowl, and that was cause for jubilation among many of us. Since the Super Bowl, obviously, I have a new source of inspiration. And I will. I'm going to talk a bit about why I paint, how I started painting what I'd like the viewer to see from my paintings, and in general, show you why I enjoy doing what I do and why people enjoy seeing what I paint. It's not a typical thing to have an art exhibit devoted exclusively to sports painting. It's probably even less traditional to have a sports painting exhibit done by a 73-year-old woman. So I think the Art Garage Board of Directors and the Gallery Manager for having the confidence in me to do this, to mount a show that the Green Bay public would enjoy. To this, I was given 81 feet of linear space, which seemed like a heck of a lot when I was told what I needed to fill. So I've gathered paintings that I've done since the very beginning of my painting career, which hasn't been all that long. Two years ago, I started painting the sports figures, and it was started as, I began it as a birthday gift for my sister, a birthday and Christmas gift. And Thanksgiving one year, I announced I was going to do a painting for her, and went off to Michael's, bought a canvas and some acrylics, and my husband laughed at me. So at any rate, that was a spur, and I started painting. I finished two paintings. I had never worked in acrylics before. I had last painted 35 years ago when I did the typical hobby kind of stuff, you know, rowboats and lighthouses and that sort of thing. And I had avoided human figures as much as I could because I considered them too daunting. So when I started to do my sister's favorite scene at a football game, which was the game in the snow at Lambeau Field, I was a little trepidatious. But then, um, once I got started, I really enjoyed what I was doing, discovered I really like painting big bodies moving in space. When I'm painting these sports pictures, these action pictures, I am always thinking of the movement of the, the bodies in space and the action. However, I am not trying to go just for purely the feeling of action and movement an abstraction, so to speak. I really want to have the, the figures and the play identifiable as something you would relate to what's going on on a basketball court or a baseball diamond or a football field. Because I, I, I'm concerned, I, I want to have helmets, I want to have the equipment, I want to have the things that people and the spectators see when they go to a game. So it evokes the feeling at a game, one, either whatever the sport is. Therefore, I feel that I do need to have the, the, the trappings of, of what goes on at the game and the equipment that's at the game as well. I'm never aiming, however, for photographic realism. I, I, I will take the figures and shape them and place them according to an artistic, aesthetic kind of appeal. So I will manipulate but I do try to keep true to the sport and true to the feeling of the game. I view sports, I'm working on some wrestling paintings now, but I tend to keep my interest in sports and also the movement of the human body. This presents a challenge in itself because it's not like doing a still life where you can take a vase and a bunch of flowers or some fruit and put it on a table and paint it. Or it's even different than figure painting from a studio where you can arrange a figure in a, in a staid position and, and you paint it. When you're doing football, basketball, baseball paintings, you're getting a body doing things that, that are only, only held for a second. So my inspiration and also my models generally come from photographs, they come from television where I've taken pictures of television and then tried to, to freeze frames and that sort of thing. And 
What I've done generally through time is I will find photographs, I will find snapshots that people do, and I will merge figures, changing teams, changing sta stadiums, whatever, so I get an aesthetic balance. I've discovered that most sports photography tends to be an accident in time for aesthetic appeal because you, know, you have men on the field and you're shooting a lot of, of shots, but a lot of them aren't very aesthetic. So I try to put things together in an aesthetic way so I can follow a line or so I can follow an action or, or I can follow with, with arms and legs and that sort of thing. I think part of the fun of doing these paintings has been disturbing uh, the spectators' gender views of who painters are. They sort of, they assume that the paintings, these sports paintings, are done by a male. I will frequently follow people around the galleries or public halls where my pictures are exhibited and hear them saying things like, I wonder how he got that sky. I wonder how he painted that, that, that shoe and got that depth and got this. And the assumption is always that it's a man painting the pictures. And I think that the fun part is, is that, that, that the artist paints what they like to paint and what they want to paint. And the, the gender isn't really an issue here. And I really like the fact that I have confused people and I would like to walk up to them and say, hey, a 73-year-old lady painted those pictures. What do you think of that? We had a closing reception for this exhibit. It was in the last day of January and it was a cold day in Green Bay and we were very pleased to see all the people who arrived. We had a lot of different people. We had Packer enthusiasts who came basically to see the sports. We had other people who came because they were interested in the art and wanted to see what was there. We even had a couple babies and children who seemed to enjoy the color and liked to touch the paintings. We also had people there who enjoyed different sports. Uh, this woman really enjoyed baseball and she wanted to talk about the various games, which teams she thought were playing, how I decided what to paint, we had a good conversation, actually, as I explained to her that really these weren't specific games, but they were perhaps sp specific fields and specific players. We had other people who came. Uh, my sister was there and some people who have line danced with me. We've had uh, other folks came because they had heard that the exhibit was going to be there. Um, one of the things I like to do in my football pictures, I like to put people I know in the stands. This is a power sweep picture and it's probably one of, I tried to make it look old because obviously it is from quite a while ago. I have various people in the stands. My sister and I are, I usually put us in the stands with numbers on our jersey. Um, we had people here who really liked the sport of baseball and wanted to talk about sports. Some of the folks wondered in what order the paintings were done. We're trying to guess which were, which were first and which were last. And what we're talking about here is the Chicago picture and also the um, football picture. And on the football picture, I had been specifically trying to work on equipment, helmets and cleats. I discovered that all cleats aren't the same, and I wanted to, to have a receiver's cleats versus a defensive lineman's sweep. We're going to be thank thanking some people who helped. Uh, Mike Smith was hugely important in hanging the pictures. My sister helped. My, my daughter helped. We all got together to put the pictures up in the right order, and people seemed to like the order they were in. I also want to thank Teresa and Maynard, neighbors of mine who bought the Power Sweep when I first started painting, and they loaned it to me for the exhibit, as did a few other people. I want to thank my daughter Lisa and Larry Lichty, old friend Lawrence Lichty. He is a gentleman who took the video and also took many of the pictures that you see here. Here he is photographing the red wall. And I want to thank my husband as well. Now when I brought home that first canvas and David looked at me dubiously, I think um, 
he immediately got the idea that this was going to be something fun. I thank him for that. Now, like all good Wisconsinites, after this showing, the reception, we, we needed to celebrate. I live in a small town called Dykesville, Wisconsin, and this is the famous Sonic Bowling Alley. That I like to paint subjects that show a lot of action, a lot of color, a lot of movement. I also do commissions for people who want specific poses, specific players, specific games. I've had a good time doing those. Um, I've also enjoyed the opportunity to work with college and high school athletes and a few children as well. I feel that I can get the most out of my art if I have good images to work with, and I certainly have gotten them. Mm -hmm.